Hello, this is Katie, and this is Thanksgiving card number three. It's pretty quick and actually fairly easy, but I want to show you a technique. I have already made it and um, pre-cut the pieces to make it again. But this uh, image here I made from two pieces, so we're going to talk about masking. And it just looks really cool and it's really easy. So I'm going to start with the, the white card stock that goes in the middle, and then we'll just mount it here. I have the orange, I think this is Simon Says Stamp orange. Um, this is paper tray ink, just the regular white. And then this is paper tray inks rustic, rustic white. It's kind of like a recycled look, um, kind of a creamy, maybe ivory color. I just like it a lot. So this is four and a quarter. This is just weirdly like three and seven eighths of an inch. And then I think this is this is three and a half square, so they'll fit together the same. But um, I'll start with this, and then I actually added I added wink of Stella, so I'll be doing that at the end too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first, I think I'll stamp the sentiment actually underneath. I'm using the So Thankful Lawn Fun set. Um, I just picked up from somebody who had it on Etsy, so it's just pretty cute. And it's just handy. Um, I didn't have, I don't think I have, I should know, um, any pumpkin stamps. Um, not that I can think of at the moment. So they're just very cute and easy and fun to color. And um, we want to use memento ink so that we can color them in. And I'm just using the same memento ink to stamp the sentiment. Um, just because I don't need the VersaFine necessarily. Uh, it's bold enough with without it, so I'll just stick with that. And then we will mount, um, let's see, we're going to stamp the little one first for this technique. I'm going to get an extra block for the bigger one because I have them, and why not? So set the bigger one aside. We're first going to stamp the little one right about here. And then I'm going to stamp the little one again. All you need is a, a post-it note or if you have that post-it tape or uh, just aim for the sticky strip. So I'm just going to kind of stamp him near the top. This stamping doesn't have to be pretty. We're just using it as a cover. Wow, that got crazy. Using it as a cover. So it's the mostly sticky part. It doesn't matter if it's not fully sticky. It'll still work. Um, I want to cover up this side, um, cover it to protect it so while we stamp the big one, then it's going to look like the big one after we peel up the mask, like the big one is in the background. So I only really need this side of it. So I'm going to cut around the left side, but I don't need to cut out the whole thing. So it really just depends on the area that you're masking. Sometimes if the area isn't so intricate, you really just need post-it tape. You don't even need to cut it into a shape um, just to cover up something to make something else look like it's behind it. So I'm going to take this mask, place that right over it. Okay, so that's our post-it piece down there. Then <clears throat> take our ink again, ink up the big pumpkin, Put that one over here. And then take your mask, peel it up, and there you go. I just love how that looks when you peel it up from that, and it's just so cool. Let's do that one more time. So it looks like that, and then you say, oh, it's perfect. So that's so fun. Um, so then I'm just going to color it in. That's really just the technique I wanted to show you but I do want to show you kind of how I color. This looks okay, blended. You can kind of see that I used darker orange around like the rim or the lines. Um, so I have YR16 and Y38, which don't really, they aren't really next to each other on the Copic color spectrum. Um, since the technique was really fast and the rest of this card is pretty quick, you're going to 
get to see me color. And I think I'm, I went on either side of the lines too, just to make a line. And I'm getting a little better at blending. I definitely don't, not certified in Copic markers, which is a thing, by the way, if you didn't know that, you can get certified. And I went out a teeny tiny bit there, but you can't really see it. So hopefully that's okay. Just try and stay in the lines. And then I actually drew a line along the bottom too. Just fill that one in. Hope this is still on camera, there we go. Okay, all right. So then I took the Y, <clears throat> the Y38, which is called Honey. The other one is called Apricot. Um, they blend okay together. I'm pretty sure this is the one I used last night. You kind of go over, go over the original line again, and then kind of just drag it in. And you do it a couple times, and that's kind of just how it blends in. Go over the original line, kind of pull it in a little bit and just do it a couple times. And with the Memento, it's it's so good, it just doesn't bleed at all. No matter how many times you go over it, it's great. It might start to get a little blurry if you try to color over the black lines too much. But, and you can even just kind of fill in the middle. So if I just fill in the white space, then it'll kind of, it'll look like that, but once you start blending, it starts to look like these three pieces where you have kind of a a border there. So you want to bring that in a little more from the edges, and there they just kind of blend on their own. A lot of it happens just by drying, really, but um, you just want to make that look like it's just a little shadow. And like we tried to color, like we're supposed to with $6 markers, because why not? Okay, good enough for me. And then the green stems, I just used the YG23, nothing special. Um, I think it's my favorite green Copic marker. That's not gonna zoom. It's called New Leaf. I want it to focus. There it goes. I just colored in the stem. And uh, one of my favorite things about Copics is that if you just go over it again, one more time, it's just a darker version of the same color. And if you go over it a third time, again, a darker version. So you can have, you can do a lot of shading and blending even with just one marker, for example, very quickly. If I have this one I color fully, then I go over this one again, then I go over this. You can see that it goes from dark to light, but I only used one marker, so it's just a matter of how many times you run it over. Um, they're very fun to play with. Sometimes I just stamp a lot of images from a new set, and then I just color all day. So. I have my Wink of Stella that I'm going to add to it. I'm actually going to do that after I stick it down. And I actually did run out, and I took Jennifer McGuire's advice. This actually looks kind of funny. You can see it chunking up inside. Uh, to add water inside to get more life out of your Wink of Stella, because the water is going to dry anyway. Um, I don't know what liquid was in there before, but water seems to be fine. I put some in there last night, and I just drew a little bit on the paper and um, more glitter came out, so you can get more life out of it <clears throat> if you have run out, because I do not have a backup. Okay, then I'll run my tape runner on this piece, and we'll mount that on our card base. right in the middle. And now we're good to go. I think I have a little tiny smudge right there, but I don't know what it is, so. Okay, so that was um, just cute on its own, but I did like the how the Wink of Stella looks. So hopefully this isn't too, I think it's very, very glittery because I added the water. So try and spread that out a little bit. 
And I just put it on the pumpkins and the stem. And running the wet Wink of Stella over something will also probably make it a shade darker as well, so keep that in mind. Especially if you've added water to your pen. And it's a lot of wet, so. Yeah, there's a lot of glitter coming out. <clears throat> Okay. I think water may be a little thin. I don't really know what is in those pens to begin with. I'm just going to stick the rest of my post-it down and pick up some of the liquid. You can even kind of spread it with your finger if you want to. There's just a bit much in some of the areas. Now I have a glittery finger. Okay. So that that is it. I just really wanted to show you the, the masking and how you can do that. Um, the first thing I remember masking was actually, I have had or have, I think I still have it somewhere, um, an oval stamp, a solid oval, and it was kind of like a, a, a platter almost, so you could stamp something, stamp like, let's say you had a lamp or something. Uh, you stamp the lamp, and then you would stamp the lamp again, or the bottom of the lamp really, on a piece of post-it, cut it out and then you would stick that over like we did with the little piece of the pumpkin there and then you'd stamp your solid oval over it and when you peel up the lamp it looks like the lamp is on like a tabletop or something so that's just another example of how you might use it but it's cute to make things look like they're behind other things or you know two little crit critters or animals or something um and it's just a really neat technique that I learned kind of in the beginning but I don't use it a lot and I thought this was a good good time for that. So anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully soon I will have number four. Thanks. Bye.